The drink, the drink, the drink, we're clicking to the environment, we're clicking to the environment, we're clicking to the environment. And we are back with the one and only and awesome guy they call Mark Ushak. All right, so we were just um, actually talking about uh, lead and everything and more energy efficient homes. Um, so now what I want to ask you is, well, I'm going to ask you to explain or, you know, dive in briefly into um, a couple of recent, recent projects you have done um, during your work as a lead advocate. Sure, sure. The current job, uh, and I'm really going to start with that one there because it is probably my biggest lead project. And it is the Flatiron Building in New York City. Um, and uh, the Flatiron Building is a, a landmark building, it means it's not only a historic site in New York City, it's also on the National Historic Registry as a, as, as a historic building. And um, I, I, I was um, able to get this position, and, and it's really the sustainability consultant, and um, I actually convinced them that they should go lead because, you, you know, you, 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 you want to build or you want to remodel this uh, a building to, to be sustainable. And again, that, that whole thing of, of, about being able to market the building um, as being a high performance building needs that label. And that label in this case is going to be LEED. And we are shooting for LEED Platinum. And um, it's, it's difficult. We're doing, I'm, I'm working on the pre-certification worksheets now. It's just very time consuming to get these done. And um, my, my client that I represent, her name is uh, Veronica Manetti. And she is the uh, president of Sagento of uh, USA. Sagento Group of USA, and I've done uh, a, a, a building with her previously, and we've, we've become a very, very good friend. She's a wonderful, wonderful person, um, and I helped her with a multifamily, high-end multifamily building that she was renovating um, in uh, downtown Manhattan, and I came into the building about a third of the way done because she went through uh, three or four different consultants before I came in and said, look, we can do this. We can't, we can't, um, she wasn't going to go lead at this point because it was going to cost her more money. And I told her it was going to cost her more money. So I, I, I recommend not going that route there, but I did recommend going uh, to Energy Star, uh, which is a, which is a government program or the volunteer government program. Uh, but to make long story short on that building there, I did get her building down to meet the Energy, course, Energy, Energy Star standard, which is three air exchanges per hour based on um, on the, the volume of the building. So the, the building became very, very energy efficient. And she put, she put very, a lot of time and energy into this building with you know, high performance windows and air sealing and insulation work. And uh, we became very, very good friends after that. And so uh, just over a year ago, she contacted me and saying that the Flatiron building was gonna be going under reconstruction and it's 21 floors. Um, on this building here, and um, that she wanted me to be the consultant on this there. So when we started going to uh, owners meetings, because she's only one of the owners, um, she is a major stockholder of the building, but the, the, any, any kind of um, decision has to be a consensus of all the owners. They all have to agree, right. um, which could make it a little bit difficult, but so far everything seems to be working out pretty well. Moving a little bit slowly, but it's still working out. Really quick, so, Mark. Pardon me? Really quick, if you don't mind just pulling your uh, camera down a little bit. Oh, you, like, oh yeah, sure, sure. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I'm not, I'm not paying attention to myself up there in the, in, in the <laughs> it's screen good. there. Um, so, so we, we, we started construction. We're, we're, we're uh, working towards lead. We filed for uh, the, we registered the building with the USGBC, sent the, the fees and stuff in. Um, so this is my biggest project. It, it really is. Um, it, it's so far so good. We've uh, finished the abatement so because we had some uh, contaminant materials near asbestos and lead. So that had to be removed by code. 
Um, it's an old building. It was built in the early 1900s. Okay. Well. And, and everything that we do really has to go in front of Landmark Commission in New York City because you really can't change the outside of that building because it is Landmark. And it was over the courses of the year. So the, what they're designing now, it's been taking a little bit more time than what they anticipated was a new entrance area and so like that and trying to really bring it back to the way the building was when it was first built. Um, so, you, you know, it, this building is a challenge because they want to leave some of the interior components uh, and, and, and still try to achieve leave. And what I mean by the interior components, like with the exterior walls, they really didn't want to go and start removing all the exterior walls to add additional insulation in there, which I think is a huge factor because I think that's one of the areas that's so important. Again, it's like you putting that coat on uh, before you go outside to keep your, you keep your, 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 the heat in. And that's what I, I'm trying to convince them to do is I want to keep the energy in the building. I don't want the energy going outside the building that costs money. We have some great engineers uh, that, that are really, really thinking um, in terms of efficiency. Uh, the biggest thing that really when COVID hit, uh, one of the first things I did was talk to the engineering firm and the, and, and the, and the one gentleman um, um, about, you know, you know, we need to address the indoor environmental quality for any type of, of viruses and bacteria. And just at the same time, ASHRAE, who, who is uh, the, um, the American Association of Mechanical Engineers, uh, actually came out with some specifications. So they really addressed that. And we looked at all of that stuff there. Uh, we're putting solar on the building to try to... Nice. Yeah. We can't put a lot because of, again, the shape of the building, but we can, we, we think we can put between 30 and 32 K up there, which would be enough maybe to run some, uh, illuminate the building and some common area lighting. And we're also looking at if there's a way of, of, of collecting some rainwater and using that for irrigations and what have you, um, increasing and uh, or actually improving the indoor air quality to make sure it's a nice, healthy building. And uh, the floor, it's going to be subdivided, so there's going to be a number of tenants in there, and they're already looking and marketing the building um, as being a green, high-performance building. So it's it it really is exciting, and I have a great. That's sick. Yeah, that is incredible. A, yeah, there's a it, they really there really is a great team working on this, and and um, and right now because of some of the architectural decisions that have to be made. We haven't had a meeting recently, but I, I have a phone call tomorrow that Veronica and I get on um, because we really need, I, I need some things answered. And, and usually it's, it's, it's really great. You put an email out there and everybody jumps in. We all talk about it and see what we can do. So the collaboration, the, the teamwork and stuff like that is really, is really there. And, and that makes That's it really cool. exciting. And I hired an intern to work with me on the project. She's really been really super. She was a student of mine um, uh, at Kane for a couple of years. And she's, mm -hmm. taken, yeah, she's taken some time off. Um, very, very intelligent young lady who really picked up on lead like really well. She still asks me some questions, which is great. Uh, we, we have great communications. So um, yeah, I mean, if this building achieves uh, gold it, it's going to be a huge accomplishment and a, and a huge statement for for uh, for historic buildings in new york city it, it really yeah. is yeah yeah absolutely it will be yep yeah and your name will be in the credits for it too that's awesome <laughs> well, that yeah it is and um it most likely will be my last project. Uh, yeah. yeah well we're it's still a, a year plus away before it's finished it does take a lot of work. It really, it really does. Um, and I, I'm just at the point right now that um, I just want to concentrate on my teaching, but I couldn't turn this down. I mean, first of all, my client is fantastic. I mean, like I said, she's a, she's a really great person. And if you, if you look her up and do a little research work on her um, for your podcast, you'll find out that she is just a wonderful, wonderful person. And, um, and it, you know, I'm, I'm, getting close to retirement age so you know for me to go out there and do this kind of work anymore i love it i love every second of it you know testing the buildings and stuff like that but it beats me up now <laughs> you know it's not like a, i'm not a young i'm not a young chicken anymore although i feel that way 
Um, but then I have my I have my daughter coming up behind me, uh, my youngest daughter, whose birthday is tomorrow, who is turning 31, actually 1982, right? <laughs> 32, 32, had to do a quick math there. And um, she is a level one engineer for, for a company that does a lot of testing and verification of mechanical systems in, uh, in the tri-state area. Nice. And uh, she actually asked me if I'd go out, um, and, and I think that next week we're doing it. We're actually gonna test a friend of hers house, the, the, the levels of energy efficiency, because I have the equipment. And I said, that's great, but you've got to come over and help me get the equipment in the car because, ah. somebody, you know, joking with her, of course. So, so we're looking forward to that, you know, you, you know, because here is someone who's also very, uh, becoming very energy conscious. And so we're hoping um, that, um, that we can look at his house and, and, and do the testing and then implement, you know, uh, measures that he can put in. And that's what we're doing at the Flatiron building. What kind of measures that we can put into the Flatiron building that's going to make this building stand out uh, uh, among the best in New York City. That's so cool. It, it, it really is. It's very, it, it is very exciting. It is. And un, the unfortunate part about this since COVID, I haven't been back up to the city at all since, since well, March. Yeah, yeah, really anyone has. <laughs> no, 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 no one can be. And honestly, I'm a little bit um, leery about going up there because I take mass transit. So yeah, I'm, right. I'm kind of skeptical about getting on a bus. Um, and it really, when I, I, I traveling back and forth to New York City for the last 10 years, that's the only way I went was either bus or train, depending on my, my teaching schedule. Right, um, right. But now I, I, you know, I'm cooped up in my house. I shouldn't say I'm cooped up into my house, but we don't go out as much as we used to. And to go up to the city to look at this building right now, I'm a, kind of a little bit skeptical going up there until things yeah, are would, yeah. A better. Yeah. It's been so, a while and there's like kind of a virus going around or, you know, yeah. or out there, I should say. So, I right, mean, right. It, it's definitely good to be concerned about it. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, we, we just got to be cautious and, 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 and do things right. But um, I know we're going to get through this and I know this building is going gonna, it's, it's gonna to shine. And it's because we have such a great team behind us. And, and again, when you're doing lead, it's not just one person. It, 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 one person cannot do it. It's a team and it has to be a right. team effort. And, um, and everybody, gets, everybody gets their name on it. And, and, that, and that's really what it's about. It's not just me, um, I, it's everybody's name because I, I can't do it by myself. Um, oh, absolutely not, no. Yeah. That would, and, that would be uh, like your whole entire life. <laughs> yeah, 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 it would. It, it really would be, and it's just too big. It's just too much work to do. So right. everybody's been really great about it, and everybody is on board about it. And so um, um, it's exciting. It, it, it really is very exciting. And everybody keeps saying, "Oh, your name's going to be on it." Well, that's not really what it's about for me. The what's it, what it's about for me is, is is taking an old building, which are challenges and to see how we can improve that building's performance. And that's really why I really like this job because there's a lot of potential here. That's so cool, man. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm really happy for you though, cause you're doing something that you love and also you're transforming an old style building into something more efficient. Yeah. yeah, you know, you know what led me this way, Ted, and I'm, I'll be honest with you, I didn't say this at the beginning when you asked me to give a little bit of a bio of myself, is that um, years ago, I was a carpenter. I, I came out of college, you know, back in the 70s. I, I majored in, in, in criminal justice. I thought I was going to go into law enforcement. I, really? I, I love, yeah, I love forensics. I, I did. Um, but I, I, I just wasn't meant to go into law enforcement. So I, I hooked up with somebody that was looking for a carpenter's helper. And I spent about 20 years in, 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 the, in uh, being a carpenter. And the amount of waste that I saw. And then when I said, that's it, I'm going back to school. I'm going to get my teacher certification. I'm going to go teach high school science. That, that's what I wanted to do. And that's when I met Dr. Wheeler who I spoke about earlier, um, and he said, no, you're crazy, you know, and he showed me the ropes here. He gave me all this information, and it really was an epiphany for me. I was like, oh my God, and then when I started taking these professional certifications, I learned the physics behind a house, or behind a building, I should say, 
because our buildings run on physics. Every bit of it has to do yeah. with difference in pressure, difference in air movements, you know, uh, you, you know your, your uh, transmission of heat, or in, you know, that's what it's all about. Oh, yeah. And when you, when you start learning that stuff, it's like, oh my God, I should have had a V8. I mean, you know, this is... <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh my god, and, that, was, that, Mark, that just made my day. That just made my day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. you know, I, I really thought I was a really great carpenter. I really pride myself on my work. And I, I really think, and I, I worked for some very big builders in, 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 in New Jersey in the Rumson, Fairhaven, Little Silver area. But then I started learning the fixes behind a house, the physics, and I was like, oh my God, I didn't do anything right. And, and, <laughs> I, I, that, and that's the way I felt, you, you know, because I, I didn't know about the, the air movement. I didn't know about the, the transmission yeah. of heat. I didn't know about all that stuff. And I, 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 didn't, I didn't know how that you should really be putting things together a little bit differently than a conventional building. And once you started learning that, it, it, it really just clicked. I was like, Oh my God! Yeah, I get this. And, <laughs> and 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 like I said, when Dr. Wheeler said that I was his hero because of how I transitioned and how I just moved in and 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 really grasped this, but he was the one who showed me the ropes. So I always give him credit. And so the teacher became the student, and the student became the teacher. <laughs> yeah, 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 exactly. And and today we still have this really great friendship that every now and then we, we talk and communicate. So, so I always think of him as as the, as the person who who you know uh, led me to the water and, and 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 allowed me to drink. It's like the you know you can lead a horse to water, but you can't make it drink. Well, he led me to the water, and I did drink it. And, and, <laughs> and, and I did, and I did, and if it was a V8, then yep, should have had that V8, you know. So, um, so yeah, so um, I, I, I enjoy it. I, I, I think it's great. Um, I, I think it all should. I think everything should be like this. I, I, I really do. And, um, and I, I'm, I'm very optimistic that the students that I teach are going to come out as yourself, because you, you, you were a student um, a little bit there that look what you're doing you you're you're promoting you're promoting your podcast you're promoting sustainability and you are reaching an audience and and they're learning from you and they're saying to myself god you know ted's right on about this stuff it, this is like really great and oh, that's you. what we that's what we need and, and and you know it's people like you who are helping to educate the rest of the people who who are unsure about it oh thanks mark i appreciate that yeah Oh, all right. <laughs> well, I'll be keep doing this because of that now. But um, all right. So that's our final question of the show. What does sustainability mean to you, Mark? And what do you do in your daily life to become a more sustainable individual? So it's kind of like a two-part question. Yeah, fine. Okay. So, um, you know, sustainability has a very, a, a lot, I won't say very, a, a lot of different definitions everybody has a different definition of sustainability right. and they're all correct they really are but most of them are always talking about what you can do on a global scale which is great we can we can we can we can um we can think globally and uh, global and act locally and i forget who said that um so i came up with something because i have to think about sustainability more on the local level. So to me, it requires that we focus on implementing a complete change that improves the current state of our communities, to involve our communities, to improve the health and welfare of, of our communities and the future of our communities. We need to build a strong, secure, and thriving local community. And we should restore and preserve the integrity of that life support system within our community. We need to provide economic opportunity for everyone in our community. That's how I look at sustainability. How do I practice sustainability? I practice sustainability by 
reducing my waste, to think about others, to um, share my knowledge, to be as local as I can with anything that I do. Pandemic has helped me even tenfold with that because I don't, I don't, I don't leave my house. <laughs> uh, I, I can either walk to a grocery store um, and pick up my groceries. Uh, that's you know, because I live within that, within that, uh, that boundary. Walking distance. But, but, you know, for me, um, it's, it, it came down to, since I, I really fell in love with teaching, is to teach others and to, for others to recognize what they're doing and how easy it is to make that transition to be more sustainable. I'll, I'll give you a great example of that. Um, in my physical science class, we have a class, it's a lecture and a lab class, and I have a young <clears throat> lady in this class, and um, I showed a documentary on the Mississippi River system. And it was really, it was really fantastic. Almost everybody thought it was great. And this young lady said to me in her, in her reaction paper that, um, you know, I, I don't really care about any of this stuff. It's, it's no big deal to me. I'm not into this and stuff like that. So I had her do a little more research and, and, and ask her, you know, how often she goes out and visits nature. Do you have any pets? What kind of flowers and stuff do you have? What's around your community? Where does your food come from? And things of that nature there. Um, and then she started really thinking about it. And she goes, I never gave that any kind of a thought or how that impacts anything that I do or it, how it impacts others. Absolutely. She goes, I was selfish. I left my car running when I went into into the convenience store to get my coffee. She goes, "What what what's what's the big deal about that and and, and what have you?" So, for her, it was it was a, an eye opener. I said because what you're doing is that you're not working with your community. You're working against your community, and and you can't work against your community. You got to work with your community. You got to be part of your community, and. In some cases, you have to set an example in your community. And living in a townhouse development, that's really very difficult because I look what goes into our dumpster and believe me, it's not very sustainable here. But you know, I have compost bins. I compost all my food except for meat and dairy. I, 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 I use TerraCycle for products that I cannot recycle at my curbside pickup. It costs me money, but that brings me down to almost zero waste. I mean, I still have waste, don't get me wrong. I still have waste. So, but I have maybe three gallon pail of garbage a week that my wife and I throw away. And I think half of that stuff might be facial tissues because my wife doesn't, doesn't like the idea of composting facial tissues. But it's just facial tissues. They compost, they compost great, it's carbon in your, in your thing. I have a native, my wife and I planted a um, wildlife garden that we had uh, certified by the National Wildlife Federation this year. Um, because because we have nothing but pollinators and, and, and native plants, bird feeders and bird houses, water for the birds. Um, so that's that's how that's we have rain barrels that we we, we have that actually a, a colleague at, at Kane, uh, Professor Earl Heinegger, uh, gave to me. Got me a couple. Heinegger. Heinegger. Yeah, remember the big will? Another that another great he, another. My first episode is with him. Of this oh no, kidding. Podcast. He was the first one. No kidding. Well, he was. He's a good one. He's a very. Him and I are very good friends, and um, we're actually going to team. Yeah. So you know, that's for me is is, is being sustainable. I mean, and, and I do practice that. I mean, I really do. We try to buy as local as we possibly can. We 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 you know we're we're remodeling our bathroom. We we have we only have a one full bath and a, and a half a bath. So we looked at some of the cost of vanities and stuff like that. My wife got an old dresser, paid fifty bucks for it, painted it. Freaking thing is gorgeous. Put a new top on it, and it, you know I mean people have done this, and she's seen it in, in design magazines. You know a new vanity was a thousand dollars. Cost us fifty bucks over at the Habitat for Humanities. I, I'm not sure I said you really want to use this as a as a, as a, as, a, as a vanity because it had a top on it, we took a top off, so we're using that. So, so we're, we're, we're very savvy a, a, about that. We, we have no problem oh, buying, cool. yeah, yeah, we have no problem buying used furniture. You're gonna clean it anyway. She bought a, we bought an antique couch that way and then donated their other couch. So, 
you know, we really try to live that way. We live fine. We went on vacation this summer. We took a chance and we did go away to the uh, Great Smoky Mountain National Park. Ooh. We did drive. Only way to get there. Um, yeah. My car gets my car got 43 miles to the gallon on the highway. So I felt I felt, I felt OK on that one there. I, I, I did. It's not an electric car, but it is it is uh, you know very fuel efficient. So, and my wife has the same mindset as I do. So we're, we're, we're two peas in the same pot, I guess you can say. We really do think about that. And, um, and then we do, we do love the beach. We, we live a little bit further away than I want to, but it's okay, it's really great. And so that's, that's our solitude, going down to the beach. Doesn't make a difference what type of, what time, what time of the year it is. We like doing our walks on the boardwalk, get our exercise in. Uh, I'm a birder. I go bird watching as, as much as I can. Um, and um, I record um, monarchs uh, both during but both migration season uh, on an a, a, a organization called the Journey North. Um, I, they really just pass through my yard. Um, uh, even though all the milkweed and stuff that I have, uh, because of where I live, I really don't get a lot of, of residents around. But uh, at, at least I have what. Um, what, what the wildlife needs around my area to, to uh, sustain themselves. And I, I, I don't find it difficult. I actually love every second of it. I, I, I really do. So that's what st sustainability is to me. Wow. That's it. That's, that's like pretty much you're, you're just a lot more um, cognizant of, you know, your everyday, uh, life and your activities but you know you know ted it it, it it becomes second nature i don't think about it we just do like, it like growing a habit yeah. yeah like for an example we didn't know what we wanted for dinner last night i was really hooked on pbs wednesday night's a great night for pbs <laughs> uh, starting with their with the with, with the science programs that they have so at eight o'clock you know computers off that's it and focus on so we threw a frozen pizza in and it actually it's made here right here in new jersey it's called tree tavern Ooh. And so there was a couple of pieces of crust left over and she started putting things in the garbage can and said, did you forget something? She goes, oh my God, yeah, we can put this in the compost bin. <laughs> so, you know, you know, so, so she, we're, 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 we both think about that. You know, we go out to dinner when we were going out to dinner. If we had bread left over in our table, I, I always ask for a doggy bag. Uh -huh. And you know, take it home because they they're going to throw it away because they can't resell it. They can't do anything with it. Right, right, yeah. I take yeah. I, I take it home, put it in my they compost bin. That's a waste. Yeah. It, you know, so even when we go out to dinner, uh, when we were able to go out to dinner, um, you know, we we we, we, we be careful with for what type takeout trays that we get. If they have styrofoam trays, I try to put everything in a plastic and a paper bag for me. Would you? Um, mm -hmm. Because again, they're hard to they're hard to recycle. You can't get rid of them. They're usually a, a polystyrene styrene number seven or something like that. So they're a pain in the ass to get rid of. So we tried to look ways of around that so we don't we don't have that big of a footprint. And and I, I think we do very well. And it, it just becomes second nature to you. It, it, it it's not an inconvenience at all. So. It, it all keeps it down locally. And that, that, I mean, I, I even go dumpster diving in my dumpster, quite honestly. I got some pretty good stuff out of my dumpster right here. I, I really have. I really have. My wife, too. Um, my wife has picked up a few things out of there, too. She had a great rock, a great chair that she picked up out of there. But people throw, people throw their whole houses away in, in complexes like this here. I actually watched somebody today, uh, yesterday throw four nice kitchen chairs in the dumpster. And yet there's a habitat for you now. Uh, if you want these, have have at it. What's that? I said they, they didn't even bother saying, hey, you know, we'll put these out. Hopefully. No, well, they left them out there by the dumpster for a few days. <laughs> no, they didn't do anything. They left them out by the dumpster for a few days. And, and all of a sudden, they should, I saw yesterday throwing them in the dumpster. I said, you know what? You have this little minivan. Why don't you just take them over to the freehold to the Habitat for Humanity store and donate them? There were four, there was four kitchen, there was four chairs. There was nothing wrong with them. They were, they were fine. Really? Me, yeah, to me, that's way. And I told my wife, I said, from now on, when I see stuff like that, I'm going to throw it in the trunk of my car. I'm going to take it. And I'm going to take it to the Habitat store or whatever I have to do. And I do. I mean, I, I, yeah, if I can find something in the dumpster that. <laughs> I took, I, I mean, I found a few things. My wife and I both found stuff in the dumpster. There's there nothing wrong with it. People just throw things away. 
and I knew an old friend where, 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 where my children grew up in Sharkerba Hills, Neptune, New Jersey. And uh, we had this one friend that lived uh, uh, behind us, and she was actually from Europe. And she, she used to make fun of Americans. And she became a citizen here. She goes, because I, I furnished my entire house with what you th people throw out at the curb. And, and really? every bit of the stuff in her house, except for the box springs and mattresses, of course, but all the furniture, all the furniture. She said, I would drive around on bulk day and I'd pick the stuff up, bring it home, refinish it. And she goes, that's all more furniture. And her, wow, there, was nothing, so cool. there was nothing wrong with her furniture. And if you ever go into a Habitat for Humanity store, go in there. If you're looking for something, I guarantee if you keep going back and back oh, into this one. Like, like going to say, I don't know, Home Depot or, or Lowe's or whatever, some kind of, or, uh, you know, some other furniture store. Instead of going over there to get, you know, furniture for like um, thousands of dollars, go there for like hundred bucks, you're good to go. Oh my God, you have no idea some of the stuff that we have pulled out secondhand. What? <laughs> um, I, I, I am very serious. And now, she, and now she now she's even on um, the Facebook marketplace because she's looking for a couple Yo, of Yo, that place is awesome. I found oh, she loves it. She loves it. She's looking for a couple of um, area rugs for because we put hardwood floors in the house and we took yeah. out the carpet. So she wants, you know, little rugs. We have no problem buying second. You, you clean them. You clean them. But they that's all. You know. Nothing wrong with them. They're, you know, if it's really worn, and you don't buy it, but you mean you can you can see them. You go look at it. If you don't like it, you don't buy it. We bought a we, she bought me a chair for uh, up in our TV room. It was a nice recliner, hundred bucks. Nice. Uh, you know, threw it in the trunk of our car. We tied the lid down, drove it home. I was like, this is like the greatest thing in the world. So, <laughs> so, yeah, you, you know, and and and, and you know it. It, it, it's it's not difficult. It, it really isn't difficult to do, and and I just don't see how people just live the other way by throwing all this stuff away. If anybody really looked at how much waste we really produce in this country, oh. they'd be shocked. They'd be shocked. I, I think. Uh, I mean, I, I, I would say I understand. I think I understand honestly, like a fraction. And I have like watched a couple documentaries, did some research. Like, I still think that I only know a fraction of how much waste we actually produce. Well, if you have an opportunity, it's a very hard film to find. It's called Trashed. Trash. By, Trash by Jeremy Irons. Okay. Oh, yeah, I there, think I saw that on. It's not on Netflix. I know. I don't believe it's on Netflix. Okay. I know. I ha, I. It took me about three months to get my own personal copy of it, and it, oh, wow. and it's such an eye opening. I think it was done in 2015. Um, another one about what we're doing to our ocean. Look, these, all these films show the degradation, but they also show how we're, we're, we're addressing these problems. So it's not just about the degradation, it also has the positive, the pros and cons, or the doom and gloom. Another very, very good one is called A Plastic Ocean. That oh, one might, I think I've seen that, yeah. Yeah, that's a really good one too. And it, it, it is a shocker to, to my students yeah. When they start looking at this stuff and they're saying, oh my God. And then I, I have them doing their own personal waste audit and their own water audit and their own, their own uh, um, plastic audit and, um, and their own energy audits to see what kind of energy they're using. Right now they're getting ready to compute uh, their, their, their carbon dioxide output from, their, from the amount of driving that they do. Mm -hmm. uh, you, you know, if you don't measure it, then you have no understanding of what you're doing. And it's not trying to tell somebody that you're terrible. That's, that's not what it's about. It's, it's more it's, about making you aware. And yeah, awareness it, of your, your consumption, not like saying like, oh, well, you, you consume this much of what, you know, energy of this kind of way, like shame on you. It's, it's just making you aware and- Right if it opens your eyes to what you're doing, you could change it. If not, then yeah, okay, yeah. For one. <laughs> you, you know, it, I had a student that actually you know, it changed their, 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 their statistics in one of my, in one of my, in one of my exercises that I gave them. And, and I said, why'd you do that? And I knew it wasn't right. And she goes, 
well, I, I, I thought I'd fail because I use so much. I said, that's not, the, that's not the object here. The object here is, so you use so much. How do you make that, how do you adjust that? That's all it's about. I said, you had no idea how much water you used. Did you? She was using like 200 gallons of water a day. You know? Yeah, I mean, the average person uses 100 gallons of water a day, which is still huge amounts of water. You know, my wife and I are about 50 to 55 gallons of water a day, okay, which is below average. So she goes, well, I was afraid that you're going to give me a zero or, or, or something. I said, that's not what the assignment's about. I, I don't care if you use 1,000 gallons of water a day. The assignment's about making you aware of your usage and what can you do to still live your lifestyle but reduce your consumption. Mm. And we all need to do that. We all need to look at that. And again, that brings it down to my community level. What can you do in your community? What is part, who is part of your community? And really, when you start thinking about your community, everything around you, the land, the animals, the neighbors, I mean, you can go on, the biodiversity, the plants, the trees, these are all part of your community. I the think, why don't you, you the water that you bathe in or drink? Right. That, right. All that stuff is part of your community and you live in that community. So why wouldn't you focus on that community to make that community better? And that's how I look at sustainability. I can't help you in Africa. I can't, I, I, I can't, I, I can, I can, I can, I can sign petitions. Um, I, I can take actions that way there, but I, I can't go to Africa and help you drill a well. I, I don't have those types of resources, um, but I can promote things here in my community that can help you here in your community to help you improve your community, to reduce your energy consumption, to reduce your water consumption, to reduce your waste consumption. I can do that here. You know, like in, I think it was in Uganda where they planted 350 million trees. Yeah, I supported that. I bought a tree to help them out. And it was really a, a dollar or two donation uh, for something like that. And so I can support that way there, but I couldn't go there and help them plant those trees. Yeah. So again, we're back to that think globally, but act locally. Yes. Good. <laughs> <laughs> well on that note um i think we're gonna wrap this up man all right excellent this was so cool i'm so glad that you invited me to do this this was fantastic oh my god the the, the pleasure's all mine mark like this, oh. this is awesome <laughs> I, I i am honored and flattered that you asked me to uh to do this i, I really am so oh, hats off to you for for spreading the word and 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 really having um uh, having doing this to to get this out there and uh, and to show people that it's 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 not as hard as you really think it is yeah i mean not only do i enjoy podcast honestly like like the guests i have on this show like especially like especially you like make this whole podcasting so fun it's just because we both have a passion for the environment and honestly just I guess simpler living, so to speak. You know, every, everything you you try to make your your carbon footprint or just living in general better. You know, whether it's financially, uh, financially, environmentally, or just for yourself. You know, for your neighbors, like you said, yeah. communal. Yeah, it's just fun, man. It, it is. It, it real. It really is fun. It it, it really is a whole lot of fun. Fun and a beautiful. Um, like a better word, procedure to, you know, you're here, you want to go here. The procedure to do that, is, you can make it really fun. Yeah, and, yeah. There's no question about that. You can, you can. And yeah. to follow up with the whole fun, um, please tell everyone how they could actually get in, in contact with you regarding lead certification or just you sharing can. your knowledge. I'd be more than happy to. The best way to contact me is through email. My email address is m y u s c h a k eight at gmail dot com. Best right. way to get to me. That'll be in the best. link in the description below too. <laughs> Pardon me. 
I said I'll put that in the the. Little yeah, thing. yeah. Uh, best way to get me. It really, it really is. I, I mean, I have my cell phone here, but you know something. Uh, you, you know, I can't be bothered with the cell phone half the time. <laughs> you know, you know, you know. It, it's great to have to talk to my wife when she's not home, or we have to communicate and stuff like that. And even my children. But sometimes my children are paying. They, they keep texting and texting. You know, because we have we really have a group chat in, in, with my children. I have three really great children. Um, they are very environmentally conscious. I will have to say that. And 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 um, they look up to me, and I look up to them. I, I felt that I did a, a a very good job. And my wife's children are the exact same. She's got two girls, and they're married and 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 have families. And and but my kids, they don't stop. My it's like you know how many times like I got like eight messages from them, and it's really just a, a an email chat. So for me. The cell phone, forget about it. I'll be happy to call you, but don't keep calling me because if I don't recognize your phone number, I ain't picking it up. <laughs> but I answer, I, as you know, I answer every email. Yeah, I answer every email that I get. I have no problem answering email. I find it so easy to take care of that way there. And my students are the same way. Oh, professor, can I have your cell phone number? No. <laughs> no, it, it, it's plain and simple, okay? Or you know what I do is I give the director's phone number out. Oh, sure, here, here's the director's. Yeah, here, I don't tell him it's the director. Yes, here it is, right here. You can call me anytime. And then she'll, she'll email me. She goes, Mark, I got this phone call. Yeah, I know. They wouldn't, I, they wanted my cell phone number. I wouldn't give it to him. I give him your office number instead. Yeah, my, 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 one of my younger brothers is pretty cool. Years ago, before we had cell phones and stuff like that, there was somebody looking for me, and he, my brother Robert, it was a, a little bit of a smart oh. ass when he was younger. Right, hold on one second. I'm just going to uh, stop the show, and then we can keep Go right ahead. But uh, all right, guys, without any further ado, <laughs> this is the Drink Sustainability. Thank you so much, Mark, for being on the show, man. Thank this you. Was absolute freaking pleasure. Excellent. You have Thank no you. idea. This is awesome. And I'm sure you yeah. had just as much fun as me. I hope you even had more fun than I had. Oh. Oh, th I, this was this was excellent, <laughs> excellent. And um, really quick, um, I actually I'm gonna continue uh, helping her out. Um, my my friend, the myth, the legend, uh, Casey. Uh -huh. She sells my brittle gourmet peanut brittle. Okay. And um, what's it called? She actually makes this from scratch, like ha handcrafted everything. And uh, actually, the holidays are coming up and. I'm not gonna lie, these make it for a very good holiday gift. They're a you? nice dessert. The way I describe them is like, they're like a, a, a crunch bar, so to speak. Very peanut butter flavored, but um, um, it's like nice and kind of crunchy on the outside and then nice and gooey on the inside. Oh, they're delicious. And um, surprisingly for brittle, not gonna lie, they do not stick to your teeth. <laughs> her, that's a good thing my dentist would like that what happened my dentist would definitely like that one right <laughs> <laughs> well yeah. you 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 well, look when you contact me tomorrow you send me the information and i'd be happy to support awesome thank you I'd be and, happy to support a, a good a good thing so not a problem uh, yeah she she actually um helps try to support a uh surf rider foundation oh most definitely a great organization yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, her tagline is "It doesn't stick," so definitely uh, at your earliest convenience. Oh, most to. definitely, most right. Actually, I, I just put up on my um, on my school site um, um, one of the surf riders beach cleanup which is coming up uh, this weekend, matter of fact. Oh, um, I may have to go grab one. Yeah, good on their website. I think it's October 24th. This weekend, they're doing it all up and down the Jersey Shore. So oh, um, we have some beach cleanup. It's either Surf Rider. I think, I think it's a Surf Rider, if I'm not mistaken. Okay. Um, they had their beach cleanup this week. Sweet. All right, well, yes. everyone check that out, too. And um, when you guys go to uh, My Brittle, just go to mybrittle.com. Okay. When you, you know, click on whatever product you want at the, uh, as a promo code, uh, type in drink sust at checkout drink as in you drink a drink. And then S U S T I'll have the link, uh, the description in the comment section below. Excellent. I'll, I'll, hey, Mark, I'll like send you all this stuff via email. Oh, excellent. Oh, good deal. Okay, yeah, yeah, excellent. Yeah. So good you don't deal. have to write it down or anything. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> don't want to miss it. So, yeah, I promised you I'd take something. So, that's, that's great. 
No, yeah, for sure. And that helps support her. And it also just tells her where her, uh, her uh, online traffic has come from. So hopefully some of my viewers and yourself could go support her because it also supports me as well. So well, that, the that, that's good. Oh, environmental initiatives and a cleaner environment. Excellent. Good deal. We definitely like to support those types of uh, initiatives. Oh, hell yeah. And um, also speaking of environmental ish and the initiatives, I can't talk properly. Um, this, uh, this brewery, uh, Beach House Brewery in, uh, Belmar. Oh my gosh. Yeah. One of my favorites. Yeah. I, uh, I buy, uh, I buy some beer from them once in a while for the show too. And I, I, I'm just trying to, you know, create some foot traffic for them. So maybe in the Oh, end. you don't have to say, you don't have to say that one there. <laughs> we, we, we definitely stopped down there. Um, we haven't recently, but we, my wife and I will go there. My wife's not a beer drinker, but I, I like some, That's I like good, good I like good tap beer. I mean, I don't, I don't drink can or bottle beer. I'm, I'm really spoiled. I mean, I really am. I got, I, I, I'm very spoiled. I'm a brat when it comes to that. So I like, I like a nice mug of beer and that's one of my favorites. And it comes, some of the restaurants around the area actually sell it too, as well. Nice. So if, it, if, it, if it's around when we go out, when we used to go out and recently we just started going back to Klein's restaurant in Belmar um and which is right, oh, down, the street right down the street from me yeah, I was... right down the street from the beach house exactly right yeah yeah so um oh. if sometimes they have it sometimes they don't but yep uh, that's one of my favorites nice and uh i mean i wasn't gonna shout them out before but i'm going to anyway just because i've been drinking their vodka this whole entire show and it's actually wow geez I put it in the freezer now. All the condensation is just like <laughs> floating all over my desk right now. So hopefully I don't go into a power outage during this. But um, uh, NJ oh, J Beach, Beach Badge. Badge Vodka. They're actually located in Freehold, so okay. go support them too. Why not? Yeah, um, yeah. My wife yeah. drinks vodka, so we'll have to get some of that too. We're pretty close to Freehold, you, so that's not a problem at all. Yeah. So um, yeah. All these ads are for you, and also for the uh the viewers of my podcast. So uh, excellent. Excellent. Good deal. Do. Everyone have an awesome day and enjoy the weekend. Thank you so much. Mark, you have an awesome day as well and stay safe. Everyone stay safe, please. Thank you. You too. All right. Good night. Good night. Hello everyone. Thank you for watching The Drink Sustainability. Warning. As you watch the show, be sure to clink at your own risk. Drinks may not appear the way that they seem.